Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We're going to talk to you about position and velocity and acceleration in this video. So usually when we represent a function for position in calculus, they will often talk about it as s of t because position starts with s, right? No, position doesn't actually start with s, but oftentimes you'll see your position function written as s of t. So this is going to be our position. Maybe it's a side to side horizontal position. Maybe it's a height, a vertical position. But if that's our position function, we want to look at things that we might get asked in a calculus course and how we use this function to get those things. So the first thing, if this is our position function, how would we find the position at a particular time? Well, if s is our position function at a particular time, just means we need to plug in a particular t value to our s function and that will give us the position at whatever time we plug in for t. If we want to find average velocity over a period of time, so we'll have two different t values on the function. So we'll have some sort of like t1 and we'll have t2. And what we'll need to do is plug those t values in and see what the position is. So we'll get some y values when we plug those in. So we'll have a first point and we'll have a second point and then we just simply get the slope of the line between those points. This is what we called the slope of a secant line before. The instantaneous velocity at a particular time. Now this is our slope of the tangent line, right? So to find the slope of the tangent line for s of t, remember what we'll do is we'll first find s prime. We'll find the derivative. That gives us the formula for all of the slopes, all of the instantaneous velocity everywhere on the function. And then we'll need to plug in a t value where we want that instantaneous velocity. Now this instantaneous velocity, we could be traveling to the right in a positive direction, to the left in a negative direction, or if it was vertical, we could be traveling upward vertically, which would be a positive change, or downward, which would be a negative change. So speed is actually going to be the absolute value of our velocity. So what we did above where we found the instantaneous velocity, we find that and we plug in t. If we take the absolute value of that, then that will give us the speed. And now for the acceleration at a particular time, acceleration is the instantaneous change in velocity. So with velocity, you think we've already taken a derivative of our position function. Acceleration, we're going to take a derivative again to get that function. So think about what's happening here. If I start with my position function and I take the derivative of that with respect to t, then that gives us s prime of t, the derivative, and that is also known as our velocity function. Okay, so that gives us instantaneous velocity. If we take the derivative of this now again with respect to t, so take the derivative with respect to t of the velocity function, then that's actually going to give us v prime of t or our acceleration function, which we would actually call probably a of t. Okay, so velocity function is our derivative of the position function. Acceleration is the derivative of the velocity function. So what we can really say then about the acceleration function is that the acceleration is actually, we take the derivative twice, in other words, we call that the second derivative of the position function. Let's look at some examples. We have a function s of t, position function is negative 16 t squared plus 64. That represents the height of an object, so that would be vertical position t seconds after being dropped from an initial height of 64 feet. We want to know how long is the object in the air. So for this one here, how long is the object in the air? I just need to know about when it hits the ground and then I can find out how long it was in the air, right? So when does this hit the ground? That's about location, that's about position. So I need to use this function here. And if I want it to be hitting the ground, then I want my height, my position, to be zero. So I want to figure out when is the position function zero. So I'll solve when is zero equal to negative 16 t squared plus 64. Now this you can just solve with algebra, right? If I move the t squared term to the other side, we'll get 16 t squared is equal to 64. We can certainly divide both sides by 16. And we'll get that t squared is equal to four. And if we root both sides, then technically we get that t is equal to plus or minus two. Now, if I am dropping 
the object at time equal to zero. I don't think I go backwards in time, so I'm going to ignore the t equals negative two. And we're just going to go ahead and say that the object hits the ground after two seconds. So if I let go at zero seconds, and I know that it hits the ground at two seconds, then our object was definitely in the air for two seconds. If we want to figure out the average velocity during its flight, so remember that's going to be the slope of the secant line. So this is slope of the secant line. And remember, secant line is still involving algebra. So what we'll do is we'll need to figure out two points and then find the slope between those points. Now, I just found out that we hit the ground after two seconds, we had a height of zero. And I think you can tell if you plug this in, plug in two for t, you're going to get an s value of zero. So this is a point on my graph. So this is about the end of its flight. What happens at the beginning of its flight? Well, at the beginning of its flight, that's when time is zero, right? So if I plug in zero to my function, I should be able to get the s value or the height from this as well, right? If I plug in zero for t, I would get zero here plus 64. So plugging in zero would give me 64, right? So at time equal to zero, when it starts, this is my point, and when time equals two at the end of its flight, that's my point, and I should just be able to find the slope of the line between these two points. So we'll just go ahead and say y2 minus y1, in other words, zero minus 64 equals, it's usually x2 minus x1, but I guess in this case it's actually t2 minus t1. So here we'll get two minus zero, and so we'll get negative 64, divided by two, and that will give us actually negative 32. And if we're dealing with feet and time is going in seconds, this is actually velocity of feet per second. And why is our velocity negative? Velocity is being calculated as negative because our position is doing what? It's actually decreasing, right? We're starting at a point of zero comma 64, 64 feet in the air, and as time passes, our object is falling in some kind of motion to the ground to this point. So because our position change is negative, then we're getting an average velocity that is negative. If we want to find its velocity at a particular point in time, not over an interval of time, then that's instantaneous velocity, right? So when we say, what is its velocity at two seconds into the flight after two seconds, in particular, we know that's when it's hitting the ground, right? So this is really asking, what is the velocity of the object when it hits the ground? So we're really trying to find that velocity function, and remember that velocity function when it's instantaneous, when it's at one particular point, that's actually going to be our derivative of s. So we want to find the velocity function, and we want to know what it is when t is equal to two is what this part after two seconds says. But let's find our derivative first, right? So our s prime of t, which is our velocity function. Taking the derivative here, power rule, two comes out front and multiplies the 16. We get negative 32 t, power goes down by one, so this becomes t to the one. And then what is the derivative of 64? 64 is a constant, so that derivative is actually zero. So we get our velocity function is negative 32 t. Now, if we wanna know the velocity at two seconds, then we would simply plug in two seconds. So we would say the velocity at time equal to two, plug in two for t, then that will just give us negative 32 times two and we will get negative 64. And now think about velocity, right? Should be in feet per second. Looking at another one that relates exactly to what we just did, so we want to know the speed when it hits the ground. Now, in the first part, we knew that at time equal to two, that's when we hit the ground. And then in our last example here, we figured out the velocity at time equal to two. That was negative 64 feet per second. Now, I know that at time two is when I hit the ground. So this is actually the velocity when I hit the ground, right? 
Question is, what is the speed of the object when it hits the ground? Well, remember that the speed is just going to be the absolute value of that, right? So our answer here is going to be the absolute value of negative 64 feet per second. And that will take care of our negative there, and that will just give us that the speed is regular old positive 64 feet per second. Looking at our last one here, we want to know the acceleration when it hits the ground. So this when it hits the ground part, I already know that that's when t equals 2. We found that earlier. All right, so think about what we have, right? We have s of t was our starting function. And we took the derivative of that, s prime of t, and that was our velocity function. And remember for that one, we got negative 32 t. And so here, if we already know now that our velocity function is negative 32 t, then our acceleration, which is the second derivative of the original position, but that is the derivative, right, of velocity, we said, is acceleration. So when we take v prime of t, that's going to give us our acceleration function. And if I take the derivative of negative 32t, that just gives us negative 32. Now acceleration here is actually going to be feet per second squared, because we took the derivative with respect to t again, which is what we expect as acceleration due to gravity. Okay, everyone, hopefully this gives you an idea of how to do position, velocity, and acceleration problems in your calculus. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.